Greetings everyone, Slizzle466 here and in today's video we're looking at some of the best Forge in the Barrens wild decks to ladder with. Now you're not going to see an extensive list of decks here because we've, we're only a week into the meta, but this will give you a bit of a starting point if you're trying to get those stars up to legend or even higher ranks at legend. We start with APM Mage. So APM Mage, it's a little bit like Quest Mage, but it doesn't run the quest. It has a very heavy draw engine, it has Encanter's Flow to discount the spells in your deck, and you basically kill your opponent with Flame Wakers, Sorcerer's Apprentices, and a whole pile of spells. Uh, another version of Mage you're probably familiar with is Secret Mage. This is pretty much exactly the same as Secret Mage before the Forged in the Baron's expansion, but with the addition of Oasis Alley. 3 mana secret, when a friendly minion is attacked, summon a 3-6 water elemental. It's basically a guaranteed better um, pull off your netherwind portal, but also it's something else to have to play around when a friendly minion is attacked, is something uh, we don't see too often in secret mage decks. Um, another similar deck to APM mage is Mozaki mage. So, this is a list that was um, initially optimized by Ben from work. It was then picked up by Zeddy, who you may know is a very popular streamer and YouTuber. Um, and this list also hit number one on the China server. So it's not the easiest list to play, but once you get going, you can actually OTK your opponent pretty early in the game. You've got such a heavy draw engine in the deck, you've got your Encanter's Flow again, like APM Mage, to discount the spells, and then you slam down Mazaki, kill your opponent pretty quickly. Moving to Paladin, we have Hand Buff Paladin to start off. Now, there are a variety of different lists floating around, but I'm going with a list by Humi, uh, mainly because it's running a lot of new cards compared to other lists. So, one of those cards being Conviction, uh, this is a give a random friendly minion plus three attack for one mana, but it scales up to two friendly minions at five mana and three friendly minions at ten mana. It's also running Blade Master Samaru, four mana one six neutral, uh, with rush, frenzy, deal damage equal to this minion's attack to all enemy minions. So this is a nice way of controlling board if you're starting to fall behind and because of the hand buff mechanics in this deck. Uh, you can do a pretty good job clearing your opponent's board. You've also got Overlord Runthak. Now this is actually a core card that you already have in your collection for free. Uh, it's a 5 mana 3-6 neutral legendary with rush. Whenever this attacks, give plus 1 plus 1 to all minions in your hand. The other Paladin list I want to look at, and you probably already know about this one, this is Agra Paladin. I previously referred to it as Secret Paladin, but the secrets aren't really what make the deck work. It's the ability to get, get stuff on the board very quickly with Call to Arms, denying your opponent to be able to do anything with the Firewatch Post, with the Nerebar Weblord, and um, basically buffing, say, Crab Riders to ridiculous amounts to try and get lethal. Moving to Priest, uh, we've got Big Priest. Uh, this list is running Thrive in the Shadows. This is a core card. So this is kind of like having um, extra Shadow Visions in the deck. The difference though is Shadow Visions discovers a copy, whereas Thrive in the Shadows pulls it from your deck. Um, so it thins your deck, which is sometimes a good thing with Big Priest, but otherwise it's Big Priest and it's a really good deck. Looking at Rena Priest, uh, it's kind of a similar story to Big Priest. This is essentially the same Rena Priest we saw before the Forge in the Baron's expansion. Differences here though is it is running Thrive in the Shadows because it's basically your second Shadow Visions in the deck. But it's also running Tail and Forgering. Uh, this is a core card that you would have got for free as well. It's a 5 mana 3 3 neutral. Legendary, Taunt, Divine Shield, Death Rattle, draw your highest cost minion. And so this is very useful if maybe your Lawkeeper Pokelt 
is going to be a little slow getting you your Reno on time because you, you maybe your Anduin and your Scream is in your deck. Um, so that can help pull your Reno. Or maybe there are some other situations where you want, need to pull something very critical from your deck. And it's just a nice little inclusion to have in there. Looking at Rogue, uh, only one list to look at. The, the nerf to our Nitro Boost Poison really hurt the archetype. So I've only got Kingsbane Rogue to look at here. Now this does in fact still run the Nitro Boost Poison, though at two mana it's significantly slower. Uh, this list is also running Silver Leaf Poison though. Uh, give your weapon after your hero attacks draw a card, which is just a nice way to cycle through your deck a little faster. It's also running Paralytic Poison give your weapon plus one attack and your hero is immune while attacking. So just giving some new tools to your Kingsbane, but otherwise it's Kingsbane Rogue, it's a good deck, but it has been slowed down a little bit because of the Nitro Boost Poison nerf. Looking at Shaman, so Shaman is back. We have multiple Shaman decks, usually we have none. So here we have Murloc Shaman. This is a list by Boltzmann, which myself and many other players have been having a ton of success with. It's very similar to the old Murloc Shaman um, back in the day before Arcane Flak Mage and Flame Ward got printed for Mage, which essentially killed the archetype. What brings this archetype back from the dead is Spawn Pool Forager, which is essentially a second Mermy. It's a nice sticky minion to guarantee you've got Murlocs on the board. Uh, you've also got Fireman's of Flurgle, 2 mana 2 3. After you play a Murloc, deal 1 damage to all enemies. So this works as a progressive board clear as you um, improve your board on your side, or you can combine it with Toxifen, give it Poisonous, which means every time you trigger it, it actually, actually clears all the minions, which is incredible. You've also got Lush Water Scout, which is kind of like a magic carpet. Um, for your Murlocs. You've also got South Coast Chieftain, which is basically a Merc Spark Eel, but for Murlocs. You've got Nothing Can, Nothing Can Stop Us, which is basically a third and fourth every fin is awesome, but it's three mana, which is absolutely insane. So really fun list to play, very strong in this meta. The other Shaman list I want to share is Even Shaman, so this is your typical totem even shaman that we're used to dealing with. However, you've also got the Firemancer Flogel in here. You've got the Crab Rider in there. Uh, you've got the Ice Fishing to help you draw into that. You've got the South Coast Chieftain, which is basically like having four Merc Spark Eels in the deck. Underbelly Angler to help get more Murloc. So it's kind of a hybrid Murloc even shaman list and it might be something you want to give a spin. Moving to Warlock, tons of Warlocks. So we start with Cube Warlock. Now, why would you want to play Cube Warlock with all those mages floating around? Well, Drain Soul got changed, so now it's essentially a penance for Warlock. For warlock. So you've got just some extra heal against aggro, uh, Bad Luck Albatross got reverted back to 3 mana, which really helps the archetype. But otherwise, it's just your good old cube lock. You cheat your big demons out, whether it's off your Void Caller or it's off your Skull of the Minari. And then you bring them back with your cubes and do all sorts of frustrating things to make your opponent give up. Also, this list is teched because uh, this player was queuing into a lot of Arena Priests at the time. So that's why you see the Grizzled Wizard Sir Finley combo in there. Darkly Warlock. So as expected, this deck isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, this specific list is running Tams and Rome, three mana, one, three. Whenever you cast a shadow spell that costs one or more, add a copy to your hand that costs zero. This deck has a ton of shadow spells in it. Uh, it's got, for example, Power of Overwhelming, Spirit Bomb, the Solarium, just to name a couple, um, but otherwise it's just Darkly Warlock and it's got some extra tools to play with. Uh, looking at Discard Warlock, so Discard Warlock, um, this is pretty much 
um, roughly how it was before. There's nothing particularly new or special in here, but it's a very fast deck, um, especially in a new meta where people are still experimenting, can really punish um, your opponents if they're not playing an optimized list. Reno Warlock. So looking at this specific list, we're going to go through it pretty quickly. So going through here, we can see there's a power overwhelming in here. So this is just a sneak in lethals in some cases. You've also got the Sir Finley Grizzled Wizard combo to deal with Reno decks specifically, um, mainly Reno Priest, but also um, maybe odd decks as well or even decks. Uh, you got the Drain Soul again because it's a great spell now to have in Warlock. You've got the Tams and Rome to get value off the various shadow spells in the deck. Um, but otherwise, it's just, you know, your stock Reno lock. You've got your Ticketus in here to make your opponent's life miserable if they're playing a fun deck. Uh, but otherwise, you know, Reno lock got a little bit better. Um, and there are a lot of people who love playing Reno lock. So this is a good starting point to get going. And finally, uh, looking at Warrior, we've got Pirate Warrior by Keith Numbers. Pirate Warrior got a ton of support in this expansion, um, both in new cards as well as uh, uh, core cards. So having a look here, we have Bloodsail Deckhand. So this is from the core set, one mana, two, one, Pirate Battlecry. The next weapon you play costs one less. So this is great because you've got things like Ankar, in your deck, you've also got the new spell Outrider's Axe. Uh, this is a 4 mana 3-3. Three, three. After your hero attacks and kills a minion, draw a card. It just helps cycle you through your deck a little faster. You've also got Fog Sail Freebooter, which I know I keep saying this, but it's basically a Merc Spark Eel for Pirate Warrior. You've also got Rakara, which is a Forge in the Barons Legendary, which has turned out to be pretty insane. So not only are your minions getting buffed when they make trades and survive, they also get buffed when they go face. So having this stick just for a turn and having a nice wide board can really make it difficult for your opponent to deal with all the pirates in play. If you want to try out any of these lists, you'll find all the deck codes in the description below. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch all of this video to the end. If you want to help support this channel, you can click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, and until next time, hope to see you again.